Um, yes, uh, so to start, uh, Alpland Bridge um, is uh, actually a part of Alpland uh, holistic solution for bridges. Um, therefore, it is uh, also connected with Alpland engineering. And usually, when we start with new projects, we always start from Alpland engineering and then we create either bridge projects or, for example, we have uh, different uh, action tabs uh, like for road construction where we have uh, specific functions which are needed in, in road planning. And uh, yes, so when we start bridge, uh, usually a window pops up and our uh, examples in the, which are available or delivered with the product um, are listed. And here you can see we have um, different ca categories of examples. Uh, we have modeling and end analysis uh, examples, which means that, yeah, uh, Alpland Bridge is software or is a tool where you model your bridge and you also have a possibility to automatically derive your analytical model and also calculate uh, and analyze it and uh, perform, for example, also design and checks uh, in, with different standards available. And we have quite some uh, examples which if you would like to, to uh, test or to explore or to see how things could or can be done in Apple Bridge, I think that th th those examples are very nice uh, reference. Um, <clears throat> for the beginning, to give you a little bit of, of general overview, I will start uh, actually with our getting started examples. Example, which is a pre-stressed uh, concrete bridge. And for this example, we also have a manual, step-by-step -step manual, where the entire project is uh, described really nicely step-by-step -step so that if you are new or if you start, uh, if you just started with bridge, you can actually go through all the basic functions um, also by yourself and you have all the nice explanations in the manual. So this uh, is our uh, getting started example. It is a pre-stressed uh, concrete bridge, hollow box bridge uh, with tendons, with slightly curved axis, with cross fall along the axis and we have here also two abutments model. Um, on the top of, of our uh, user interface you see different uh, sections like um, axis uh, uh, action bar then for the cross section 3D modeling, uh, tendons constructions, loads, checks, calculations, options, and so on. And yeah, now, for example, all the functions are gray out. And that is with the reason because um, we would, uh, we wanted somehow to, to make sure that the user does not use wrong functions on wrong places. Therefore, when we start a certain definition, for example, definition of the axis, uh, more precisely axis plan, then the functions available in this uh, re or for, for this part will be activated. And so we can then start um, defining. I just need to... Ah, the example is already calculated. Also not. Okay. Oh, it is calculated. Okay. 
Yes. And <clears throat> if we start with the X, so we, when we model our bridges in Alpine Bridge, uh, we have really tried to, to develop the software uh, from the perspective of bridge engineers so that the structure of the project as well as the functions are really very specific and uh, really go with the workflow of most of bridge engineers. And therefore you can see that in the same order as we have the action bars, we have also the project uh, structure. And of course, we first always uh, start with the axis uh, as, as, a, as a base of our bridge. Then we continue with the cross-section definitions once we define our cross-sections, uh, we further define our variations for our cross-sections, for example. And finally, we <coughs> combine the axis with the cross-section and extrude it, so to say, along the axis. And this way, we create then our structural members. Um, as you might already know, Upland Bridge is parametrical software, meaning that you can change any defined uh, parameter any time uh, during the planning, in any phase of the planning, and uh, you simply just play, uh, press the play or recalculate bu button and the entire model will be newly recalculated with with the new ge geometry uh, will appear with, of course, then in an analysis, new results and so on. Um, so on the left side, we have our project structure. In the center, we have uh, four different uh, windows. Uh, the main, of course, is the 3D uh, model window where we uh, see how our model uh, is being put together or being built. And then we have further two uh, windows which open and change depending on which part of the uh, structure we are working currently. And the third one is the analysis window. I have to recalculate the model once again because the computer was you know, probably in sleep mode and did not save correctly the data or something. And yeah, and uh, on the left side we have our property windows where depending uh, on when, where we, where are we with our functions, the property window always open accordingly to the function or to the uh, bridge part which we observe at the moment. And here in the bottom part, you can see this is our logging window so that uh, when we recalculate uh, our model, we know exactly what is being calculated, uh, which steps are coming, for example, if something is wrong with the model, if some definitions are not correct, we also have warning and uh, error messages implemented so that you get a feedback directly, okay, something is wrong with the definition, with the calculation, or, or something similar, and that we can react then accordingly and correct our model. Um, of course, not everyone perhaps likes to take a look at this because it somehow perhaps um, uh, remembers you as a user on, on programming or something, but actually it's very clearly, if, if after a few times you understand very easily what are these um, texts actually explaining to us. Mm. <clears throat> okay. And further here 
uh, on the left side, beside the structure, we have then the uh, tabs for the tendon definitions, for the placements overview, and our custom trees. Uh, custom tree serves us, for example, this is our standard default um, project navigation tree, and you can define also your own uh, project structure. For example, for the precast girders, uh, usually we would like to have our girders either um, sorted by the length or by the span or as desired and this custom tree enables us that we can really structure our project as we would like to. Mm. Okay, now the model is recalculated and as mentioned uh, before, we always start with the de axis definition. For axis definition, we have, of course, possibility to define axis manually, directly in upland bridge, but usually road axis or bridge axis uh, come from our uh, colleagues from in road planning, therefore we also have a possibility uh, to uh, actually share the axis data over BIMPLUS. Uh, this is BIMPLUS is a kind of um, exchange platform where we can uh, upload and download different uh, project data and share it with uh, all project involved. And yeah, by simply, for example, if we define our axis in uh, with road tool engineering, we can then uh, easily export it uh, either uh, to Beam Plus or directly uh, to TCL. Uh, just to mention, TCL uh, is our uh, project program language and uh, it is very uh, practical because uh, this is a, not in, um, invented by us, it's a general uh, programming language and this gives a user which also like to program by themselves, gives them also a possibility to make even more with our plant bridge models because you can then uh, define your own loops uh, in a definition of let's say peers or something similar. Uh, if, and also for project sharing, for example, one project like like uh, this bridge uh, here is only 265 kilobyte uh, large file. It's actually nothing, and this is very practical because you don't need to send large uh, data files to your colleagues and so on. Um, so to come back to the axis. We have these two ways of, of defining axis. Um, not to forget uh, our new definition now, uh, our new implementation in the version 24, we have also a uh, possibility to um, import digital terrain model. And also for digital terrain model, uh, there is the same workflow as for the axis. We can either import it to Alpine Engineering from other products which you might also use in your production pipeline workflows or you can uh, import for example um, survey uh, points and then mesh the terrain model in engineering and again ex ex uh, export it di either directly and import it directly to uh, bridge or export it via uh, Beam Plus and then you can share it with uh, all your colleagues and of course you can then also import it to Beam Plus, uh, to Upland Bridge. And what is nice, if you work uh, over Beam Plus uh, uh, connection, uh, there is a possibility that, for example, if your colleague, in, in uh, your road engineer colleague changes something on the axis, he doesn't have to call you to send you data and so on. He just uploads a new revision uh, of his axis on the BIM Plus. And when you calculate your, recalculate your project, 
you can then either decide if you want to update data from BIM Plus or not. And this way you have actually uh, a possibility to always have updated uh, data which, with, with which you are working on your project. The same goes also for the terrain model. Um, <clears throat> if we then uh, go further to our cross sections, for example, this is our um, main girder cross section. For this entire bridge, uh, you can see that we have some variations in the height, um, then the web thickness and the bottom uh, thickness are changing. Uh, as mentioned, also the cross fall is changing along the axis and so on. But for, for this entire bridge, uh, we will define or we define need to define only one cross section. And of course, we need to know what we would like to or which parameters of these cross sections we would like to vary it to, to get our end desired form of the bridge. And for this purpose, we then define uh, um, or differently. When we define our cross section, we define it with parametrical lines. And if we want to variate, uh, for example, some uh, uh, parametrical lines, some thicknesses and so on, we then simply um, create a variable, assign it to a specific parametrical line. And this way we then get the connection uh, between the, uh, the cross section the variables and the variations, variation tables, which we define later, for example, for the height. Uh, this is how such a table of variations look, looks like. We simply define our stations of the bridge along the axis, uh, where we have some changes. For example, in this case, is the height of the bridge. And we can also then define different transitions and so on. And after we uh, connect these tables with our cross sections, we get, uh, after the calculation, our program will variate the cross section uh, as defined. And we have, so to say, in this one cross section control over the entire bridge, so to say, over the superstructure of the entire bridge. Mm. In this example, you can see that we have uh, quite some perhaps on the first side, strange uh, definitions inside. This is because this uh, example is as well for the geometrical uh, model as well as for the analysis. And what you see actually these lines here inside are our property sets for reinforcement. And then here we have some stress points, uh, temperature points for linear and non-linear temperature and so on. We have here our point grids uh, for the um, uh, tendon definitions and, and of course our structural units. Uh, the blue color defines the load bearing structure and the green color defines um, dead loads or low, low, uh, structures which are only, um, uh, which are taken into consideration only as loads. For example, we see here some barriers, some sidewalks, and um, when we derive our analysis model, um, our program, if we define things nicely uh, and properly, our program will automatically then recognize, okay, this is a barrier defined as a load, and we will apply it also then as a load on our analysis model. So this way we can actually uh, have very precise models also for the analysis. If for some reason, for example, uh, we would like to have simplified model for, for our analysis, this is also not a problem because with our parameters we can anytime simplify it as desired for the analysis. 
for example. And uh, talking about the analysis, um, we support uh, BIM theory currently in the product, but we have also uh, very nice connections to RM Bridge from Bentley, uh, then to Lusas, um, Midas, and yes, this way you can then simply uh, just export your analysis model to BIM Plus or uh, directly to Midas, for example, and if you export it to BIM Plus, then some other products can also uh, have access and could also take the analysis model for, for the calculation purposes, for example. Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so this, uh, these are our cross-sections and, for example, to give you a brief feeling what means parametric cross-section, this means that we can then check like this if our height, for example, will uh, or if our cross-section will behave as desired when we change our heights or when we change, uh, for example, our... Uh, ah, this is some other one, I think. This one should be our thicknesses and so on. So this is really completely parametric. And then we come to our structural members. So when we uh, put together our cross sections and axes, we define our uh, structural members, our girders, piers. Uh, you can see that uh, in property windows, for example, you can see all the, the references of this main girder and so on. We have then stationing tables with different um, types of stations, then uh, which cross sections were used on this um, girder and in this case it is only one cross section but you could use also many different cross sections and then we see also different variants of this one and the same previously defined cross section. Mm, th these tables are all um, editable so that you can do changes very quickly, very easily. Um, then, for example, this is our variation table where we now connect our variables from the cross sections together with our tables or formulas. It is also possible, for example, to define some variation as a mathematical expression, um, perhaps for some more challenging uh, geometries. Sometimes this also is very useful and with the signing of, of our variations, we then connect these parameters. And we also see here, for example, uh, if we take a look at the height of the cross section, we see then for each station how the height is calculated and what is happening. The same goes then also for peers, for bodies, which are used for uh, free parametric modeling. And of course, for the analysis, we also need some um, uh, additional definitions to the geometry like statical connections and, and rigid connections and so on. Um, as mentioned before, then we have our parametrical tendons. And for example, if we now change the height of, of our cross section or the width, and if we correctly referenced uh, our point grids for tendons, also the tendon geometry will adopt automatically with, with the change of, of height or width of the main cross section. So every, uh, all, all parameters of the bridge are, if properly connected, of course, dependencies properly connected are changing, adapting uh, automatically. Mm. Then in the analysis part, uh, we have the material definition, which where we can also import materials from our library in BIM Plus, or we can define our own materials as well. Uh, in the cross section uh, area, we see then um, our uh, um, 
you, uh, uh, um, ah, I lost the word. Um, our um, Uh, we, we see actually our information about the cross sections like areas, like uh, moment of inertia, um, center of gravity, and all these kinds of information. And we can um, check this data for each of our calculated cross section on our superstructure. The same goes also for peer, for actually for all our used uh, cross sections. Then we have the, of course, for the analysis we need the uh, tendon pre-stressing uh, actions, and where we define how we pre-stress our tendons and so on. And of course, in the construction, uh, under constructions, we define our uh, construction phases our bridge, for example, but additionally, we define also our loads or different loads and also, for example, superposition uh, um, evaluation, combination tables, evaluations and design checks, tasks are also in this area to be defined. And then we can, for example, also visualize our construction schedule and observe, for example, how our bridge is planned to be built. Ah, this is okay. Schedule. And you can see here on one side we have our tasks, on the right side we have our Gantt diagram, and below we see our assemblies or which parts are assigned to which tasks. Further, we have the definition of uh, traffic loads with lane sets and load trains. Then, of course, also um, uh, definitions for dynamic analysis, for the earthquake analysis. For our superposition, uh, we have a little bit different approach, perhaps as other products we wanted somehow to give also a visual feedback how different load cases are being combined together. Therefore, we decided for this, um, let's say, let's call it visual scripting approach, where you have loads or load cases on one side and then different nodes where you combine them with all the factors and everything necessary. And of course, combination tables are also a must for the analysis. And at the end, our results, where we can visualize um, our results either as uh, 3D diagrams or as 2D diagrams. Um, for example, let's take a look at this one. Or, of course, as tables for, for different uh, purposes, we have different abilities and we can then switch between our load cases, envelopes and so on. Mm. So this would be a, a brief overview of Alpine Bridge. As next, uh, I would like to show you um, our new uh, implemented functionality for polygonal axis. This is a very simple uh, example of retaining wall and here in this example we also used um, the terrain model and for example like this. So we have uh, in this example, we have simply uh, imported the terrain model directly from Alpine Engineering in Colada format in this case. We have defined uh, our main uh, road axis. And we would like, for example, to build a retaining wall along the road axis on the side. And for this purpose, 
we can then use a function polygonal accompanying axis, meaning that the polygonal axis in this case uh, is reference to the main road axis, will, for example, follow the same uh, elevation, uh, the same profile as the main axis has it, and uh, will also follow the curvatures, but of course, uh, as this is polygonal axis, uh, we then need to define uh, how we would like to polygonize it, and for this purpose, we again define a simple table where we, on one side, define our length of segments. In this case, uh, those segments are 10 meters long. And then, uh, on the other side, we define the uh, perpendicular distance to the reference axis of, of our segments. And when we combine um, let's do it like this. this. And when we combine uh, these two information, the polygonal axis, after recalculating the model, the polygonal axis is then automatically uh, defined uh, or defined or drawn in our model, 3D model. And, for example, um, we have also uh, nice possibilities uh, with the axis and the terrain, act and in combination with the terrain, we could, for example, do, th this is axis one, is our main road axis, and, for example, if we would like to calculate uh, our distance from our axis to the terrain, we have a very nice functionality implemented uh, in this 24 version. Perhaps some of you which are using Alpine Engineering already know our uh, CD to axis functionality where we can calculate uh, distances automatically between two axes. And now we have uh, enhanced this functionality with CD to profile so that we can now calculate distance from the axis to its own profile on the terrain, for example. And I, for this purpose, I just need to create additional profile, which I reference it to the terrain. I will leave it uh, unactive because I would still, uh, I mean, uh, the main profile for my axis one is, is the defined one and I would like to keep it this way, I would only need, like to calculate the distance to the terrain. And for example, I will define a very simple cross-section. For this purpose, let's say, like, okay, it's okay. Then I will create additional girder on our main axis. I will choose the cross section, choose the first or the beginning station and the end station. We can then choose uh, different types of refinement or uh, in this case I will have a uh, station each five meters like this and for example to get the, the distance to, to our unactive profile we then just use our CDH in profile this means calculate distance height to profile And then we call which profile we would like to use. And we will say this profile one. Okay. 
We apply this function to all our stations, recalculate the model, and you can see very nicely, for example, that our cross-section has automatically adapted to the profile of the terrain. And this is very practical function for, for different kinds of uh, wall constructions in the infrastructure or for noise barriers or retaining walls or perhaps in the hydrotechnics some dam constructions or something I could also imagine that could be easily done this way. Can I ask of course, questions? yeah. Can you do the stepping? So the, the, the height is like steps. Uh -huh, like steps. Yeah. Um, uh, depends on the on the we could probably do it. Uh, we would prop for this purpose. I imagine that we would have to use uh, some mathematical expression as a variation, and we would then simply, yeah, sim we would then simply apply this variation. For example, we would create such wall and apply a, an additional variation to this wall, which would then make the steps and out of the it. Uh, Pardon? So, yeah. I, I along, the, along all the stations, yeah. And also for some things which are per, for which we perhaps don't have the functionalities, um, we have possibilities uh, or, yeah, you also have possibility to use Python parts uh, these are so-called um, Python scripts where you can mm, program or define or you, you can do whatever you wish with this Python part, so to say, and you can then place these Python parts on, uh, in our cross-sections and then these uh, different codes do their work, for example, for some even more complicated things. Uh, one, one such example was, for example, noise barriers uh, for Deutsche Bahn. Um, we have developed a, a Python part which has uh, the concrete uh, foundation wall of the noise barrier. We have all the, the noise barrier parts, upper parts with the steel, um, steel um, parts with the piles below and so on. And for example, their demand is because in, in the railway constructions, they're always uh, referencing to the, to the rails and they have some certain uh, standards. I don't know, it uh, can be just 50 centimeters above the terrain. It has to be the concrete. The rest is then uh, uh, this protection material. And below we have to have so much concrete and piles have to have this length and so on. And we have simply generated such Python part. And then when you create your axis, when you create your, your, uh, your, your, yeah, your, your axis, which you need for your walls, you simply apply this Python part and this Python part places the wall protection parts automatically along the axis. Um, generally, perhaps to mention, uh, to better understand our philosophy, um, our, our uh, senior team uh, in, in Graz uh, has a lot of, um, a lot of uh, experience in developing software solutions for bridge constructions. And um, yeah, we, this gave us a possibility that we with this deep insight of, of workflows, of functionalities, um, and with new innovations or new technologies which are coming uh, in the digital world, we have a possibility to, or our wish is to optimize and to automize all kinds of processes which are repeatable, which are possible to be optimized, and to this way, save you your working time, planning time, um, to give you 
uh, how should I say, more precise data, if you can reuse your data, which you have already double checked, where the project is already built and you are sure that this data is okay, why simply not reusing this data? Why uh, inputting it again and again and losing time? And our philosophy is simply, we are trying to, to, to find uh, parts of the workflows which are possible to, to be simplified and optimized without losing any, anything on precision or, or on the control, your control over your model. So this is our general approach regarding the development of the software. Um, <clears throat> yes, so uh, to come back uh, a little bit to our retaining wall. This retaining wall was again uh, defined very simply. It's a simple cross section, which is then extruded along uh, along the um, uh, axis as a girder one. And uh, for example, these anchors uh, with the version 24, you have much better functionality already in Alpine Engineering specialized for anchor anchors modeling. But we wanted to show also our new uh, functionalities of bodies and free parametric modeling, like uh, body groups and containers. And for example, in for for these anchors, I have defined one anchor, which is uh, of course parametrical. I can change it for my next project as I would like to. And this is a simple body group of prisms. And then I have used containers, which are so-called um, uh, bodiless templates, which have uh, their local coordinate system. And then in this local coordinate system, this virtual place, as you can see, there is no wall around. This is like template space. We can place different structures. It could be piers, it could be piles, it could be walls, whatever, which, which have some certain um, relationship, either local or global, between each other. And for example, we want to have it always in the same set. And I have used this philosophy to place the anchors in their position. And then I have just simply took this one container with one set of anchors and place it one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight times. In this way, we have modeled our anchors. Further, out of our axis-based model, uh, modeled uh, retaining wall, we have a possibility uh, to create so-called extraction body, uh, extraction body, uh, which is which is then which becomes a body which we can use for free parametric modeling. But this body always stays uh, completely connected to our girder, uh, uh, to our X, uh, axis based uh, design uh, girder, meaning that if we change our X axis, for example, somehow, mm, let's say, Here, for example, I would like to change. Okay, this is probably in the other direction. Like this. For example, if we recalculate our model, we have changed our axis and all the things adopt automatically because they are all linked together. In this way, all the things, uh, yeah, adopt to a new situation very quickly. I can, uh, are, for example, are here many who are still working in 2D environment? Perhaps some of you? No? Okay, we are very happy to hear that, everybody. Okay, yes, so uh, this would be our small example for free parametric modeling and for axis. Then 
let's go further to our global variables. <coughs> this is a example for templating or how we can reuse our already existing data for new projects and if we know for example some we have some certain types of bridges which are our everyday work which we produce I don't know 10 bridges per month or per year for example we can then prepare such projects with few additional uh, definitions and to make it uh, so-called as a global uh, template with global variables what this means is following uh, in Alpland bridge we have possibility to export all our uh, all our data partially as well meaning that everything what you see here in the project navigation tree uh, like axis, structure, materials, uh, different kind of things, project settings, uh, combination tables, uh, whatever we have defined in our project, we can export partially. And this gives us then one so-called master uh, TCL file, well, where all the uh, sources are uh, linked. and then we have one folder with all our uh, elements which we have exported and this way we can then quickly say okay I have I need materials or uh, project settings for example standards whatever from this project I just simply add it to my new project and this way I save, <coughs> save time and uh, errors when we re-entering data. We, we avoid, we would like to avoid re-entering data. And for example, additionally, we have then here defined uh, so-called global variables. In this case, we have, we said we would like to variate the bridge length and the width. And of course, uh, this what this form now has no peers but if we make it longer we would like to have some peers placed automatically and we can also um, then we have global variables for the peer, peer height and so on and out of this model now for example if I change the length to 45 meters for example I just save my file import it in bridge and I already have a different bridge with two peers and I could go then further and say for example let's do it like this I want to have it also a little bit uh, wider I could also change the height here again save my uh, my TCL file re-import the project and I already have completely different I mean yep, yes okay. similar but <laughs> different uh, bridge and this for example to prepare one project in in this manner it, it if um, if you know the, the workflow, it should take you perhaps a few hours maximum and then you have your entire project, not only some cross-section or some, some part of the project, you have your entire project as template which you can use. And for example, we could then also further say and say like, okay, let's make it completely different again. Save again, re import my project, and then it's again completely something 
differently. So it is there are a lot of possibilities how you can reuse efficiently your your data, your all projects. Mm. As next, um, I would like to show you also our <coughs> new uh, implementation or enhancement of, of uh, 3D, freeform 3D modeling. But uh, first, I would like to give you a little bit of impression how, how 3D uh, freeform, free parametric modeling uh, looks like in Bridge. And for this purpose, I will model two abutments with one bridge, and then we will make here one so-called trousers uh, road connection, or where the way split splits. And for this purpose, I have defined my axis. I have my main axis, my main bridge axis, and the other one is so-called accompanying axis. Uh, meaning that this, it is referenced to our main axis. Then I have prepared a simple cross-section for our abutment wall, for the abutment foundation, also files. This will be the very simple cross-section for to, to represent our bridge. This is our abutment uh, wing cross-section and yeah, some other simple cross section which I will probably not use now. And yes, so I would first like to model abutment. As we have, for example, two same abutments, I would I will make one template, which I will call abutment. Yeah. Abutment. The cross section is correct. And we are now again in this virtual template space. Let's say we want to have 10 meters uh, long uh, abutment wall. And here, these sliders, which you see, these small errors, are actually um, are actually uh, variables which we have defined in our cross section. This way program now knows, okay, these lines will probably change in, in, in some directions. And therefore, when we create 3D body, these lines become, so to say, then uh, the, the areas which we can then move and, and slide and change the dimensions of this wall, for example. So we have wall as next. Uh, I would like to have all in one uh, template, so I will make a group of templates. For this, I will simply uh, create uh, a new prism template inside of this template, and I will call this one uh, foundation. We have different possibilities. We can either union with boolean operations already here in this step automatically our different prisms or we can distinct them as well and this is where we would like to reference it and now i will change uh, my cross section and i would like to uh, define it from one docking point to another so in these two docking points. For example, this is our foundation wall, uh, foundation uh, um, part, and we say, okay, we would still, we, we would like to have some overlap here, uh, some uh, uh, extension on both sides, and for this, we will simply just click on our prism, choose the function move slider, and we will say, okay, let's say one meter additional in this direction and one additional meter in the other direction and then of course our abutment needs wings as well so we will say 
Read left. Choose again the appropriate uh, um, cross section. Then I will say in this case we will reference it on the docking point and we will define the thickness of 0 0.6 meters, let's say. And since the other wing is the same, I can also copy it. We can decide if we want to copy uh, transformations like rotations or, or uh, change dimensions or whatever, or not. And yes, this is the one, okay. Okay. Now I will only move it from here to the other side. And for this purpose, I will select this coin, reference it here. Ah, uh, now we need also, we would like to have some material, for example, which we choose from our, okay, and this is our abutment, uh -huh. I see now here that we should also adapt, for example, this width here. We will simply move the slider and we will snap it, for example, to this point. So now it sits nicely. And with this, our template is ready. And now we simply need to drag and drop it into our 3D space and we say apartment 1 then we choose our uh, axis and the geometrical position 1 which we would like to, to use for this I will use uh, relative distance and the geometrical position 2 will be from the template because I would like to uh, place it only with one reference point we could also place it with two reference points for example on on a bridge cross section and this would gives us advantage then that when the width of the bridge changes the width of the abutment would change automatically as well so axis one at the beginning uh, we will have zero height and now I will also change, okay, I will change the reference of origin and here to fit this point. And we will also need to rotate it. Select the rotation axis. This is the one, yes. And we will rotate it 90 degrees. And this way we have already referenced our abutment to our, to our uh, road axis. And now we do the same also on the other side. Select the axis, then the station, the height above or below the axis, and we will apply. We will use it from the template. And also here I need to change 
yes, I need to change the reference. point and I will also rotate this one here. This. Degrees. and we have already prepared our two abutments. And now we need to define our superstructure. For this, we will use axis based design uh, approach. We will take our cross section, our first axis, and first station, last station, let's say one meter refinement of stations, each one, each meter. And this is already our first girder and the second one. This will be referenced to the accompanying axis, also from the beginning to the end. One meter refinement. And <coughs> Now, for example, and up until version 24, uh, it was not possible to uh, union such two girders with Boolean operators. Now in the version 24, we can simply define extraction bodies from these girders. We will take the entire girder as an as a extraction body, and also the second one, yes. Now we have two bodies, and we will use union function, select the first body, the secondary body, and now if we hide Further, the second one. Now we see this is our uh, so called united body from these two girders. And a nice thing about this is that also these bodies stay further parametrically connected. For example, let's change other direction perhaps like this and when we recalculate our model we have still everything connected uh, dependent between each other and yeah we, we can this way we can do uh, as mentioned before any change at any phase in any phase of the project and we don't have to we, 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 or we don't lose any work which we did before and we can simply continue with our project. Quick question. Yes? When you do the cross section of 3D representation, now these two connect fine. So you select one station and you are 2D. Yeah, 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 of course, of like course. Uh, one body. Of, yes, uh, for example, we don't have uh, detailing functionalities in Alpine Bridge because uh, for this purpose uh, we have Alpine Engineering. Um, yeah, I, I forgot to mention at the beginning, um, Alpine Bridge is uh, really software specialized for bridge design and Alpine Engineering is uh, so-called tool for detailing, for reinforcement, for plans production, and so on. And if we would like to, to for example, to create now different uh, sections for the plans and so on, we would simply export the model to Alpine Engineering, and then we can create sections, uh, plans, uh, reinforcement, and so on, out of this model here, uh, uh, 
coming from bridge. And if we, after, for example, after we have created um, sections and we notice, oh, we still need some changes done in bridge, you can still go back to bridge, make the change, you then just simply need to uh, update or, or yeah, update your project in Alpine Engineering and with update you don't lose your work in engineering and when the new model comes all the sections will be also automatically adapted. Which are already in the base? Yes, yes, yes. Layout? Yes, yes, yes. This can be all automatically adapted. So you create the layout, you create the Exactly, sections, yes, of course, you have to... You have everything in the mesh and yes, the yes. do the change, that's important. Yeah, yeah. But if your bridge went to the left side instead of right, you may end up you, you have to lay out paper space. But yeah, but but uh, yeah, you, you don't lose your work. You don't have to again cut the stuff and yes. and so on. Yeah. <coughs> um, yes, please. do it for example in different ways um, I would do it probably um, yes I, I, I would do it uh, again with free parametric modeling uh, but for such abutment I wouldn't take the cross section from the side as I did now I would take it from the front and would create the prism body simply in the other direction and to get the exact uh, inclination from the superstructure, I would, for example, uh, copy my, my, this, this cross section, I would copy it so that I have really exactly the same, same lines. Yeah. I would remove the structure unit because I don't need it for my abutment. And then I would, uh, design, opala. I would design my my abutment wall around around this. Uh, for example, I would always define my cross section like, for example, like this, or around, and then I have the exact form, or I can follow the exact form of the bridge, and to create the abutment, I would then create the prism in this uh, longitudinal direction. And then the wings and everything can happen in the same principle as I did it now. And this way you could... And, and, and this, for example, if the, um, <clears throat> if the inclination uh, is usually defined by a um, by line by angle, meaning that, for example, if later you say, oh, we don't have uh, 2.5, we have 2.7%, you just simply change the, for example, I will quickly just define one line like this. And you later just change your, I don't know, to 25. Oh, okay, this is a little bit like, like this, for example, and recalculate the model and the new situation is all also adapted. So, uh, what about the longitudinal slope? Mm -hmm. <coughs> this superstructure goes. Mm -hmm. So when you create this cross se uh, section of uh, for a bottom, mm -hmm. you extend it in this direction, like in the longitudinal yeah. direction. Along the straight Usually axis. It's like horizontal. Yes. So yes. But, uh, if you have this uh, room for press tracing and so yeah. on, yeah. you have a long, long, long wall, wall or yeah. plate, yeah. which should follow that. Yeah, yeah. So what you, do you say? Uh, you, you, we have also, for example, functionalities, um, <coughs> slice functionality, for example, where we could, um, mm -hmm. what could I slice? Okay, I will, I will simply choose, for example, let's say this 
three points. And I don't want to have, for example, this upper part. And this way I can cut it in any direction I would like. So, um, yeah, you, you, you can, I mean, every, uh, or, or almost every complicated geometry uh, can be, um, how should I say, uh, taken apart and built again, rebuilt with simple prisms, simple prism bodies. And of course, as, as we are used from our engineering work, we always have to think a little bit about uh, our structures. No program will do it, everything, especially not thinking. Uh, 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 so we have to think what we would like to have at the end, and then we decide uh, how we can model, from which side we would, we would model it, how or we we will will we cut it or will we will define the some some inclinations in the cross section and so on, but uh, almost every geometry can be built with prisms. For example, our um, uh, our uh, project manager uh, modeled the uh, digital camera with prisms in bridge, for example. Or I tried some some architecture also, some prefabricated elements uh, for low-cost low housing. I have also modeled in bridge with weak parametric modeling, for example. So, yeah, a lot can be done. Of course, this is uh, our second version now, uh, second implementation or uh, first enhancement of the, of the first implementation. And with every version, uh, we enhance our uh, functionalities, uh, especially on the basis of the feedback from the praxis. We are uh, very often in contact with with, uh, with you, <laughs> so to say. And if you talk to us where you have difficulties when using Bridge or Alpine and so on, we can then for the next or for example, for the next two versions, we can then find some solution and implement it, so that uh, which which we also do regularly. For almost for every new version, we have some specialties which come out of the practice and which we implement as a priority. So, if there something would not be possible to model, we would do our best to to help you either find the correct workflow or some other workaround or perhaps uh, an implementation or an enhancement of the functionality in the coming years. Close cooperation with, with our customers is very important for us because, uh, yeah, after all, we do not develop these tools for ourselves and uh, to satisfy our imagination, but uh, we are winners if you are winners, if you do your projects uh, with high quality, with nice profit so that you can work normally. And if you are winners, then we are also the winners. This is our philosophy. Okay, and now, Let's take a look at my uh, favorite uh, topic, and this is the uh, automatic reinforcement. Um, you probably all know that reinforcement work in planning is, is very time demanding. If the changes come, a lot of work goes lost and things need to be repeated. And uh, yeah. Now we have find, found a solution in our plan uh, for which we can say with uh, very high certainty that no other product has it now. And this is a two-way link, meaning from we, we can send 
data from Aplan Bridge to Aplan Engineering, where we reinforce our uh, bridge models and if because if we have analysis possibility in bridge as well, for example, if drafter decides, okay, uh, there are some different quantities of, of the reinforcement in my uh, engineering model, he can then send this data also back to Alpine Bridge, where bridge engineer can again an do the analysis and check if these new quantities, for example, satisfy all the design checks and so on. So this is a, a very, very nice functionality. Um, and yes, I, I would like to show you how this works. Um, so again, I have uh, for this uh, example now, <coughs> I have taken the cross section, uh, this hollow box cross section, and uh, I have defined uh, different so-called property sets. So I have uh, two layers of, of uh, longitudinal bottom uh, reinforcement, then I have two layers of the top longitudinal reinforcement and shear uh, in the bottom, in the top and in both, both uh, web, webs. And these property sets look, for example, like, look like, look like this. I have defined this red line, which you can see, is actually a line which um, is kind of a guiding line along which the longitudinal rebars will be placed. Then for the second layer, I did it on the inner side. Then for the top, I have one which goes uh, through the entire uh, cross sections on the top and one which goes only half uh, in, 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 uh, half of the cross section because uh, later when we will take a look at this reinforcement in our plan engineering to have a little bit better overview, uh, I have decided to <coughs> define it like this. Of course, uh, we could, I could uh, reinforce the entire cross section uh, naturally, but uh, then we would not, it would be difficult to distinguish what we are actually looking at. So this is for the longitudinal reinforcement. We simply define the cross, uh, the property set. We define the so-called boundary line. <coughs> then, of course, the material bar diameter. For the analysis purposes, we can check the option if you want to use it uh, for shear and torsion as well. Um, and if we calculate the, the analysis in bridge, then the program will deliver you with the values of uh, required reinforcement areas. In this case, I did not uh, make for this small um, example, I did not define the load, so there is no analysis part. But uh, this still doesn't mean that we cannot use the reinforcement functionality. For In this case, we simply then just define our uh, values in, in property windows, which we received, for example, from our colleague, which did the analysis. Um, we can also, along the Along the axis, we can also have different um, uh, quantities of reinforcement, and usually, we this way we optimize the the, the reinforcement layout. Mm, so this, this also this can be defined in variation tables and then simply assigned uh, to to our. Uh, uh, defined reinforcement area and then there are some further definitions like the position from the first bar for example on this uh, on this line we can position the first bar at the first point of this line or we can have some some offsets <clears throat> also some offsets uh, from the edge um, for some uh, 
cross sections or let's say most of cross sections which don't have some special special complicated geometry we can also use the automatic geometry definition and then we simply define the cover concrete cover and if we want to use uh, to place this reinforcement bars automatically then we simply just check the option uh, uh, outline python part for reinforcement we choose from our outline library the python part which we assign and then simply save um, for the shear reinforcement for example uh, like this for the shear reinforcement we have to define the form of, of the stirrup or let's say the the basic form of the stirrup we have to define but all the the hooks the overlaps the the radiuses uh, in, in the corners and everything this can be then uh, defined via parameters in outline engineering so you don't have to really uh, define a, every detail of your stirrup just the basic form where it should lie lay and yes once once we have defined these property sets we then simply go to outline engineering and import our model and yes I, I forgot to mention for example you see here now also uh, bearings and street lamps at the top also these are our python parts which I have placed uh, in the cross section I will show you later and uh, we use python parts also for such equipment or for we could also use it for 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 example for steel struts at the side of our cross section actually for for every element which is repeating itself uh, punctuality uh, punctually along the axis on some specific stations for example and yeah while uh, we drink coffee we don't need to to bother a lot with reinforcement and the reinforcement is placed automatically um, you can see the stirrups you can see the longitudinal reinforcements and for example bearings and street lamps here show it in the animation a bit better perhaps um, as mentioned are also Python parts which can be also visualized in outline bridge and we place these parts simply with the function Python part placement when where we start the the function for example and we choose um, some intersection point for example where we would like to place our part we can then also orient it with the second point or we can simply just uh, confirm it then it will be always globally in the vertical direction um, further we have then we have to choose which python part we would like to use in our libraries we have uh, cubic and cylindric bearings we have some bridge struts mm, we have also reinforcement for a precast eye girder we have pile reinforcements and we have street lamp and for example if, if we choose street lamp then you see all the parameters which can be um, if, if we check check these parameters these parameters will be imported so to say with the part into our model and then we can change <coughs> the height of the lamp or, or the, the dimensions of the bearing and so on and after confirming recalculating the model I will now delete this one uh, we can then see in our 3d model our um, Python parts 
and for example and up until now it was so that uh, if you have uh, for example defined the bridge in Alpine bridge then imported your model to Alpine engineering and then you have defined your reinforcement uh, of course if you have then after you have already defined your reinforcement if you have then so okay we still need to change the web thickness for example you have then changed the thickness in bridge updated your model but it was very difficult to use already defined reinforcement on this new uh, situation of the model so you had to make a lot of corrections of this reinforcement and now with the automatic reinforcement for example we have now just a simple straight pier with a straight bottom and a continuous uh, cross fall and web thickness is also, also always the same and for example I will now um, I have some defined some variation tables for the change of the height so I would like to uh, to assign this and we will say um, 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 um. for example for the height we will use And after assigning the variable you can see after recalculating the model that we have changed the height of the cross section we will then further um, we will make also web thickness variable so above the pier it will be a little bit exaggerated 0 0.7 meters thick so let assign also this variable so now we take this projection of this you can see that the web thickness has changed and then we can also plot the thickness mm -hmm. so now we see that our geometry has has quite some changes and if we update our model again in Alpine Engineering we see that the reinforcement changes also accordingly with the change of the geometry So practically, we have not lost any work done before the change. And of course, we can, with this new workflow, we can allow changes also anytime later. For example, also at the end of the project, it could be that, that we might change some things. I'll also change the pier width. We didn't lose any work because we didn't do any work. Everything was done by the software. Yes. So we change also the peer geometry. 
and you can see that also the fear reinforcement has changed accordingly. I'm personally a big fan of this function because uh, I never liked uh, rein reinforcement works on, on projects and I found it always very yeah, time demanding and, and actually not interested, so interesting or attractive work and this new functionality makes me very happy because yeah, now we can, as engineers, we can really uh, focus more on tasks which are in bridge engineering important for bridges and for, for our work and we don't have to lose uh, time anymore on, on such uh, repeti repetitive uh, tasks. For example, what I have mentioned uh, before, we have further also in engineering, we have further uh, still control um, over our uh, Python parts, which we have play, placed. We can change, for example, bar diameter either in engineering or in bridge. It depends on your workflows. <coughs> for example, some larger companies, um, their production pi pipelines uh, are usually divided in the departments so that one engineer does, I don't know, uh, geometry modeling, next engineer does analysis, a third engineer does uh, then detailing and, and uh, plans production and so on. And yeah, this gives us the flexibility that uh, each of, prof of, of involved in the project can do the change of the reinforcement and the data uh, is still connected, meaning that if we make a change here now in bridge, for example, um, here when editing regions, we see different lines. And if we would have also the analytical calculation from bridge, we would have then uh, one line representing the necessary reinforcement which comes out of the calculation, then we would have our blue line representing the drafters uh, re uh, reinforcement areas and so on. And with these sliders, so to say, we can then very easily control, uh, control the, the uh, reinforcement areas and also the regions. Just choose another. I think this was the, the other Python part. example here if you remember the reinforcement uh, table variation table from the bridge you can see that this table with the reinforcement areas has been taken over by the engineering and now uh, we can control still control this uh, reinforcement sets and for example, for some reason, either we re increase, decrease the reinforcement areas, we save this, and then when we come, when we come back, and here transfer values from our plan engineering. For example, these are the values which I have from my variation table. And these are the new values which I have changed from the engineering. And this way I can then very easily transfer the data also back to, to uh, our plant bridge. And I could, for example, now do the check calculation analysis and to, pr uh, to prove that this, for example, these reinforcement sets are also satisfying all the design checks. Uh, Yes. Question. Yeah. Um, for 
example, uh, we do internet now, this is automatically, and it is more the rule for framework, which follows the mm -hmm. uh, bottom part. Yeah. <coughs> so, in the group, the second layer, only some segment above the bridge, and how this influence the necessary reinforcement that you show us in the table. You know, it's the, the amount of reinforcement is yeah. goes from one uh, layer of reinforcement, or if you uh, do the it, second layer it, manually, uh -huh. this is updated. Uh, 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 no, it, it is each property set uh, has its own uh, reinforcement areas, and for I have defined the table only for the bottom yeah. one layer, and therefore these areas which I have changed, uh, these areas are also only for the bottom one layer, so that you can control each layer separately, and you don't this way you don't uh, mix. The, the the areas between the layers because I think or we think that this could um, cause quite some confusion if we would mix for example two different la or two bottom layers with the values and so on and therefore we have decided okay let, let we let the user decide where or how many layers at all should be placed where they should be and then the user should also control each layer, could control each layer separately. That is uh, the main, main <coughs> idea. Of course, this is our uh, first implementation of this new technology in our plan. Uh, and as mentioned before, with every further, um, further version, also these different functionalities will, will be enhanced. For example, if uh, the praxis shows that for some reason we would need to control let's say all bottom layers with we would like to control all bottom layers with one slider for example like this then uh, of course we would adopt this um, we will adopt this also in the functionality and we'll make changes of the functionality accordingly so that it, it can really serve you in the field in best possible way what about the for that? yes um, so uh, when we open uh, one property set for example we have here general uh, settings like uh, bending pin factor uh, that's what I have mentioned before about the radiuses of stirrups and so on uh, we can change the cover and there are also some further uh, settings or functionalities uh, which are actually uh, overtaken from the normal reinforcement functionalities in Alpine engineering so that also with this automatic reinforcement func function uh, you get all the um, how should I say, the settings or the fine-tuning possibilities of uh, standard reinforcement functions as well. So you can, you can choose, for example, um, you can choose the, the, uh, the shape type, uh, the shape uh, delivery type, you can choose the bar start length, overlapping lengths, uh, then also how you would like for your overlapping to happen all in one line or like um, uh, a little bit uh, offset it, all overlappings and so on. So all these things can be defined in, in outline engineering. <coughs> and as mentioned, if the need from the praxis would show that some additional things are necessary or are missing for this functionality, we would then enhance it in the coming versions. <coughs> and yeah, yeah. And can you also uh, modify it if you want with some bar in the future? Yes, yes. Uh, you have, for example, this reinforcement uh, has the same properties as uh, standard Alpine engineering reinforcement. The only difference is that it is placed automatically and you can now do what
whatever you are used to do in Alkaline engineering with your, your reinforcement, it has no restrictions. Although it is Python part, it has no restrictions because uh, Python part is actually this um, function which places the bars, but the bars itself are uh, Alkaline engineering reinforcement bars. And for example, I could uh, show you also um, what I have mentioned before. For example, let's do some, some section. Mm. Let's do some simple section. Let's choose it from inside here. Yeah. Let's take this. So we have here the uh, the section of 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 this situation now, um, and if I go back to bridge, for example, and. Um, pum, pum, pum. I could say, for example, I will add here, let's say, plus zero, 10 centimeters on all the values. And we will also change the height a little bit more as well. So plus, let's say, 2.2 meters. And recalculate the model that's a must without this there will be no change and if we now again update our model you will see that the reinforcement will adapt and also the sections will change automatically with it so you really what, what we have uh, uh, discussed at the beginning you really don't uh, lose your work if you have already done your plans, uh, if you have already prepared your layouts and there was some small change, uh, you don't lose your work. So uh, all these things go automatically. Mm -hmm. And yes, so with this, I would near my end and if you have any questions to anything what we have seen today or also anything else please you are welcome to ask please use the chance <laughs> or if you have later on when you will be driving home perhaps some questions will arise you are always welcome uh, to contact us at our support for example um, and we will be happy to answer you any kind of questions. If you contact our support, it doesn't uh, mean that we will answer you only questions regarding your product. For example, if you ask us what would be best workflow with our plan in combination with my tools, which I already use, for example, now, is there any chance to optimize my workflow, my production workflows, we will be very happy to, to, to consult you, to give you advices, to find together with you and uh, with your team the best solution which fits you and your project. So, uh, that, as I mentioned before, that at the end of the day, you will be the winners and we also, together. Question? Yeah. Uh, when you create the, the layouts, mm -hmm. the reinforcement, mm -hmm. um, and mark everything mm -hmm. later on, mm -hmm. so you have a small change. Mm -hmm. I notice that programs works uh, when you update. Mm -hmm. What this means? It updates all the joints because if you have a bridge, you have probably 60 joints, or maybe it yeah. has more. It's a lot of uh, yes. joints and really time consuming and means that it will update all the reinforcement, mm. or it will update only this pair. 
Uh, and also, mm -hmm. what happened with the marks? That you already replace it mm -hmm. like you want it, so that the, the drawing is a slight nice picture. Yeah. So what happened? Yes. So uh, when when you update uh, um, your model in Alplan Engineering, for example, if I use this function, I can show you here. We have a link between engineering and bridge, and this link is working only on your command. So there will be no uh, automatic update or nothing will happen without your control. When you press update or, or import, then uh, the Alplan the engineering software goes simply through, through all the, for example, uh, through all the drawing files which you have and checks uh, all the data simply if there is any change or not. If there is a change, this change will be then calculated and placed in the model. If not, then the program goes simply further. And the same goes then for, for, for I don't know, for dimensioning lines and, and uh, bar marks and so on. If there is a change, of course, then the change will be done. If there is no change, then these marks or dimension line will stay as it is. But of course, the program has to check the entire bridge or the entire uh, uh, structure because otherwise um, it cannot know uh, where, where is the change or where the change will happen or where the change has to be uh, implement or uh, yeah uh, updated in the model in the 3d model so yeah you you do not lose your layouting or of course let, let's say for example if I change now here the the uh, width of the upper bridge part I don't know for two meters and you have already placed your sections in on your A3 or A1 paper and of course then something will have to be moved probably but uh, you won't have to do again dimensioning you won't have to do again labeling and so on. Question. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of superstructure can we model with those stuff for bridges? All the parts? Uh, I mean, Yes. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, regarding the mod, just the modeling part, you can uh, pr you can actually model everything: steel bridges, uh, concrete bridges, composite bridges. It is no problem at all. Uh, for the analysis part, um, we are on the market just few years now. Uh, and of course development uh, takes also a lot of time so for the analysis part uh, we do not uh, support for example design checks for steel structures we don't we did not uh, implement it yet uh, we have design checks for for steel for concrete steel uh, for reinforced concrete bridges um, but um, for example, for precast girder bridges, we have a special functionality, uh, so-called link girders, where you can then uh, very easily define a template of your, I can also show you a nice example, where you simply uh, define your template of your uh, girder, <coughs> and then uh, on your piers, on your abutments, you need to define your reference points or bearings so to say and then you simply just place um, uh, with, with with few clicks you just simply place your girders uh, 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 into the model for example here you can see such such bridge uh, I would turn the terrain so we can have a better look and for such Precast girder bridge. We have, for example, 
This is a girder cross section with points for the tendons. And this boundary here uh, is actually uh, will be used for haunch modeling. Uh, this is also very w one very nice uh, specialty of Alpland Bridge. Uh, why? Because, uh, for example, this is our concrete deck. It's a very, very simple uh, straight deck. And then we have our girders below. And, for example, if the deck the deck is following the road axis, our precast girders are usually straight. So therefore we have a very complicated geometry be between the deck and our girder. And also for this we have found a very innovative solution, it is called haunch. And uh, you simply defined approximately a boundary uh, which, which has to be enough high that it somehow uh, um, um, comes into the deck and then you just need to use the haunch function and the program will automatically fill this space between the deck and the girder. Here you can see, for example, this part here. This blue part below the deck is, for example, the haunch which is automatically calculated and you can see that it is changing along the axis because the road axis have, has different, uh, different alignment as our precast uh, girders. And yeah, this is also a very practical workflow to quickly define your, your, uh, your precast bridges. And can we... Can you calculate that bridge? Um, Yes, in the version 24, we have implemented also composite. Uh, the only uh, the only thing which is missing in the in the uh, in this implementation now is the crack concrete uh, above the piers. Um, for this, we have now some workaround, but of course, with the next uh, version, we will also implement this missing functionality. And um, bridges also, um, I, will, I would like to show this one. Bridges also need to be represented nicely. So we have also nice connection to uh, twin motion as well as to Lumion, where uh, you can then also visualize or make nice renderings or videos uh, of your road constructions or bridges or perhaps even the, in the entire construction process can be visualized because we have now in engineering also the construction action tab where you have your cranes, your equipment, the construction site equipment and so on. And yeah, a lot of things can be very nicely uh, rendered or presented for our clients, infrastructure clients. Do you have this movies from Spanish guy? Has this weird uh, No, I do not have it. Jerka, do you know, is Javier also on YouTube? Okay. And this uh, is so to say, li live connection so that you can work in parallel uh, on your model in engineering and in twin motion. And as you could see, you just need to update your model then in, in twin motion. Find some textures, <coughs> give it a little bit of life. And this is, for example, also one uh, type of precast girders, uh, precast uh, girder bridge, more typical for for Asia, for example. They have a little bit different uh, uh, different 
principle for 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 precast bridges as we do in Europe. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, this is uh, this is our colleague from Spain, and uh, okay, patience. Large, I assume, therefore, it needs some time. Yeah, th this visualization was done by our colleague Javier from, from Spain, and he's also a, a, yeah, a very passionate bridge engineer, and he did this model. And himself as well with our plant bridge. So, yeah. There is a lot possible. We don't uh, claim that everything is possible with bridge, as mentioned. We're a young product. We are aware that some things might be missing, especially in the analysis. But for the modeling purposes, for geometry, we were very confident that with our tools, uh, we are sure that you could design your bridges in much better, quicker, and probably also nicer bridges could happen then if we have more time to think freely about them. So, um, thank you. If there are no further questions, uh, thank you for your. I have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Just please. We were discussing uh, about bridges, but you didn't mention uh, tendons, press press. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering, uh, of course, you can model tendons, mm -hmm. um, but in the end, uh, we need to create a drawing. Mm -hmm. And this is really time demanding. We should have some, is this, do you have some simple yeah. solution? How this is automatically positioned? longitudinal section of tendons, uh, yes. level of the, uh, each station level, uh, yes. and yes. so Yes, so, um, for example, um, uh, the so-called developed plan view and developed elevation view uh, overview in our plan, elevation view uh, overview in our plan, bridge, then for tendons, uh, you could create a report where you have uh, all this uh, data or all these constraints which you have in the table when defining the tendons uh, can be listed together with your plan and uh, elevation developed view, with your pre-stressing diagrams. And we can also define a tendon report. I think if I don't define this any special point grid, then it should be defined for all. Ah, not, okay. Then I will simply say uh, I have to check the grid. So let's say this one, point grid one. <clears throat> and we can uh, create reports.
Yeah, we, we in, uh, in our plan we have also this uh, functionality section along curve and uh, for example this way you could then get your developed uh, view or developed plan in outline engineering so you have the exact uh, position of your tendons and uh, beside that we also can generate reports um, in our plant bridge oh, what did I define wrong and on one and this one Forces, geometry, yes, for example, <clears throat> and this way you can also uh, export the exact coordinates for each station or uh, actually I have here defined the refinement of each 20 centimeters. You can have it, I don't know. Of course, you can choose. You can choose okay. and this way you get your, your uh, coordinates for the, uh, for the uh, tendon uh, for the tendon layout at each point. So you have plans, you have coordinates, and this way uh, you, you would have all the required data to get your tendons not only modeled but only also placed on the construction site. And this table, this data, this is in Excel? Yeah, this is but exported this, to... This, is, this table uh, is also in the Alpha Corda inside, uh, so that it is live. Or you need to always export. No, the, this is this is and not. Then put it back to the drawing, like. Uh, yes, uh, th this is. Um, I think this one. Um, 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 put it here. If you want to Excel data to be represented in Alpha, uh, you can import it as an external reference. So every time. Excel changes, yeah, the, the report is also yeah, changed, yeah. but it's not connected it, to, it's the, not to the drawing. It's not inside the whole plan of this table. It's always no. close to Yeah, the yeah, this is a separate Excel file. Uh, but now in the version 24, we have also a uh, very good uh, reporting tool. Um, we have noticed that, yeah, almost every engineer does his reports in Microsoft Word. And we said, okay, we won't uh, invent hot water again. We will simply take uh, Microsoft Word and we'll develop special functionalities which an engineer needs for his reports. And this way we can then uh, make a live connection with Word document where you have uh, your databases in Word databases of your exported uh, pictures, tables, diagrams, uh, whatever you export from Alplan Bridge. And for example, these reports can then are live, live connected and can then be automatically updated after recalculation. For example, if the model is recalculated, you get a notification in Word saying that there has uh, a change happened do you want to update your report with new results, with new tables, with new uh, pictures, for example? And you can always choose which results you would like to to um, to put into your reports, for example. So, in, with this workflow, you could get, for example, also then such table to be live uh, directly connected with Bridge, so that it would. Uh, it could be probably updated. 
with each calculation. And talking about reports, for example, um, we, we can export our 2D diagrams, uh, design checks, for example, uh, this is, I don't know, this is fatigue, I think, yes. And you can see this is also word snippet. And here you have, for example, all different kinds of reports for uh, analysis calculation. For, for example, this is fatigue check. Then we have reinforcement design. We can see exactly our areas and so on and uh, also if some checks are not uh, satisfied you will uh, you will get a message which uh, check was not satisfied and what exactly happened and so on so that you can react accordingly and uh, and, and make the corrections in your in your model So, if no further questions, uh, I want to thank you again for your patience and we are very happy to see you in such a large number today here. So, and welcome to test, to use or to simply call us and ask us whatever you are interested in. We are happy here to help. And yeah, thank you once again. and. We can enjoy the